day 10, October 27th. For this afternoon's hunt, I'm going to go back to the same field, the same food plot that I was on yesterday evening, but uh, we're going to hunt it from the other side this time. And if you remember from uh, up in the, in the stand, a lot of the deer were on the other end, and we always considered that spot to be an observation stand anyway. Well, as you look at it from that stand, we're going to be on the right side of the field now. It's the direction that the deer tend to drift to after they get done feeding out there, moving down into the creek, across the creek, into the big and beastie field on the other side of the creek. We're going to be right there where that main trail comes off the soybean food plot and drops down into the creek. It's a lot more of an aggressive play because now we're going to be right there. If a deer comes out into that field, there's a pretty good chance that it will end up within bow range. So hopefully we can get away with it. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit riskier, but it's going to be a few days before we can get back out. And this is the last place that we knew of skinny to be moving in daylight. So we might as well make a play at it, see what happens. Uh, nice breeze. Today's temperature is probably right now in the low 60s. It's supposed to cool off as the evening goes on. So probably mid 50s. I would say by the end of legal shooting time, maybe low 50s. We're gonna we're gonna head from the house and uh, walk straight down to this tree stand. And the biggest challenge that we face might be just getting out of here without the dogs following, because we really don't need man's best friend sitting at the base of our tree all evening. But uh, that's gonna be. We'll see how it goes. Old Duke is he's getting a little bit lazier every year, so there's a chance that he might just watch us go and just be happy just to stay here. Let's get down the hill and, and uh, across the creek and see what comes out. We made it into the stand without bumping anything. It was kind of funny because I didn't notice that there's a deer bedded on the other side of this field until after we both got up here and got all of our gear into the tree. But it's just totally contented over there chewing its cud. Um, my guess is it's probably a fawn, but it shows how comfortable they are with this little secluded field back here. I mean, the deer wasn't there when I put the stand up at noon, so it popped out there sometime in the last couple of hours. Now, <clears throat> like I said in the opening interview, we are on the north side of this little field. Before, we were on the east side. We've got a south, southeast, southwest. It's kind of, the forecast is a little bit uh, ambiguous as to what direction the wind is going to be going. Different forecasts say different things, but always out of the south. So that's perfect. It blows across the creek and up towards the house. You can see the big and beastie field on the other side of the creek down here. There's a standing cornfield uh, to the east of that. And I believe that's where the deer always end up. They'll start here, work their way down across the creek, and end up over in one of those two spots. So hopefully Skinny will pop out this evening, because I do think that if a deer comes into this field, um, I've got at least a 50% chance that it's going to end up within bow range. Whereas from that observation stand, it was a real low chance, uh, for sure under 10%. So a little bit more aggressive, but uh, time to make a move, have some fun, get in there and mix things up a little bit. I think that might be the first time I've ever seen an all-out buck fight with year-and-a-half-old bucks. 
those two are going at it really hard. The one, if you watch it close, the one darker one had the advantage the whole time. He kept backing up the other one, and he's the one that ended up winning the fight. So you kind of wonder, you know, what it is that makes one buck win a buck fight over another one. And sometimes it's just aggressive attitude. And obviously those two little fellas there are gonna have an aggressive attitude for many years to come. That was pretty cool. The, uh, they don't make much noise though and just have little four corns clicking against each other. I can barely even hear it and I'm 75, 80 yards away. There have been some deer chasing around back in the timber to the west of me here. So I think that uh, there's probably going to be something pop out at some point. So I thought I'd better do my final interview before the, the deer start coming into the field um, pretty consistently. And then I would have a hard time doing an interview. There's still four deer on the field, but they're further in the direction of the other tree stand that we've been sitting in. So far this evening, we've seen a lot of action. Uh, no mature bucks at all. A couple year and a half olds, that's been it for bucks, but lots of does out here. So, I mean, with 45 minutes left of legal shooting time, I have to think that some kind of an older age class buck is gonna pop out on here before the evening is over. We'll show it to you uh, in the tail end of the blog here. And uh, my uh, schedule He's going to keep me out of the woods for a couple of days. We've got, uh, we're going to go to a playoff football game tomorrow night and then uh, cross country meet on Saturday. So it'll probably be Sunday at the earliest that I can get back, uh, get back into a tree. So be sure to check out the Monday show. I know that we've got an action packed episode coming again on Monday. So uh, check out the main show on Monday and uh, I should be back up for some video blogs again here pretty soon.